okay so i am going to try and do a finite horizon mdp value iteration example of course the idea in doing this is to get both the value and the policy in one fell swoop okay so what we're going to look at is this simple problem you have just four states s1 s2 s3 s4 and their immediate rewards are 10, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 3. Okay. And then we'll assume there are only two actions at any given place, um, any of the states. One is going right. And when you try to go right, you go 0.9 probability, you actually go right, and 0.1 probability, you go left. And when similarly you go to go left, 0.8 probability you go left, 0.2 probability you go right, okay? And of course, we'll also assume that when, if you hit the wall, you stay in the same place. You stay in the same state, okay? So for example, if you are in S4 and you try to go right, with 0.9 probability, you actually try to go right, but then you hit this wall here, and so you stay in S4, and with 0.1 probability, you go left, and so you get to S3. Okay, so that's your example. Now, before we actually do the finite horizon value iteration, and in particular, I'm actually going to try and get you a two horizon policy. That means you need to get horizon zero, horizon one, and horizon two. Okay, so in before do that, let's actually get a sort of an intuitive sense of what's going to happen. First of all, notice that there are no terminal states anywhere, no terminal states. Okay, so in some sense, actually in this case, because there are no terminal states, by coming back to the same state, you get to collect reward again. Okay, so you can, if you are in S4, for example, uh, and you try to go right, then with 0.9 probability, you'll stay in S4 and you get to collect the reward again from S4. Okay, this becomes quite interesting as you go, um, as you'll see right now uh, in, the, in the problem. Um, the other thing to note is eventually it's quite clear that since S1 is the high reward state that you sort of kind of can see that uh, the optimal policy will get everybody to go towards S1. That means if you're in S4, uh, you'll try to go to S3. I mean, you'll basically try to go left. S3, you try to go left. S2, you try to go left. S1, of course, you also try to go left. That's what you likely get to see as you go with large horizons. But then for the small horizons, it's also easy to see that. In fact, we'll see that with just one step to go, for example, Intuitively, you can see that S3, when you are in S3, um, you'll find that going to going right looks more interesting because going right, you're likely to get plus three um, with point nine probability. Whereas if you go left, you get plus point five because in the beginning, actually, S2 hasn't yet figured out that it's connected to S1. Okay, so this is so in when you have horizon one left you will note you expect to see that s3 is actually going to have go right as the policy um, and as the horizon increases eventually s3 starts saying going left is better idea okay so that's your intuitive point okay now let's actually try to do the calculations so we'll start with v0 v0 is zero steps to go the value and we basically initialize it see if you have only zero steps to go then for each state whatever reward you get in that state is the only value you will get because you have no other places to go so v0 for s1 will be 10 s2 would be 0.5 S3 will be 0.5, S4 would be 0.3, would be 3, just the rewards, okay? Now, next thing is the more interesting part. We're going to now compute V1, 
using v0 okay so i'm going to show you let's start by actually computing v1 of s3 okay what is v1 of s3 it would be r of s3 okay plus max over going left or going right whatever value you get okay now if you go left from s3 with point 0.8 probability uh, from s3 if you go left with point 0.8 probability you go to s2 so that you will get 0.5 you know in from that because the value uh, at you know at that point of time you only have zero steps to go and so the v0 is what you need and v0 is 0 0.5 plus if it, when you go left sometimes with 0.2 probability you go actually to the right side and so that would be 0.2 probability you'll get to s4 point you go to s4 so that would be 0.2 times 3 okay so the maximum of this if you go left and if you go right it would be 0 0.9 times 0 0.5 0 0.9 times 0 0.5 plus 0 0.1 times 3 okay so if you calculate this in essence you'll notice that this a point nine times so if you in this particular case you will oh wait actually my mistake right this is if when you go right it will be point nine times three point nine times three and 0.1 times 0.5 okay and so basically this would be 2.75 and this would be sorry um, once again this would be this would be 1 and this would be 2.75 and so if you take maximum you will take this and so an R of S3 is of course 0.5. So the total value for V dash S3 is 0.5 plus 2.75, which is 3.25. Okay. So based on this calculation, this value V1, that is with one step to go, um, S3's value is 3.25 okay so i'm going to now erase and that's that's for s3 now let's also look at what happens for s4 um what happens for s4 um if, if you consider v dash s4 um then the interesting thing is that you would start with r of s4 which is of course 3 plus max of you can when you are in s4 you can go try to go right you try to go right with 0.9 times probability you basically stay in the same place and with 0.1 probability you go to the previous to the to s3 which is 0.5 okay 0.1 you get to s3 which is 0.5 and if on the other hand you try to go left then with 0.8 probability you get to S3 which is 0.5 value and with 0.2 probability you stay in S4 which is 3 value. So if you do the calculation here you will notice that um, um, this would be 2.75 this would be 2.75 would be 2.75 and this would be 1 and so you're taking max of 2.75 on 1 which is 2.75 so 3 plus 2.75 equal to 5.75 okay 5.75 okay so based on that then i would actually say that this is 5.75 now the other thing to notice is when you are in s3 the max 
Okay, so we had computed the value with one step to go for S3 and also value one step to go for S4. The other thing to notice is that when we computed the value for S3, we actually knew that after two actions we could do L and R, the max came from the going right side because that's the bigger number. And so in fact, the action to take in S3 is whichever was the max action. And so at S3, you will have to go right. And similarly, in fact, if you remember for S4 2, you got the max by going right. Okay. Um, then the next thing, of course, is we can do the same sort of a uh, computation um, which for um, V1 of um, the value of S1 and value of S2, um, V1 of S1 and V1 of S2. Um, and we can actually show that for V1 of S1, we would get uh, 8.6. Um, and then that involves going right because that's the max that you will get. And similarly for V1 of S1, you will get 18.1 and that also involves, um, sorry, this one is going left and that's also involves going left. Okay. Um, if you just want to double check this, so consider something like V1 of S2, V1 of S2 is uh, R of S2 plus max of left and right. And so R of S2, of course, is 0.5. And, and then the going left from S2, going left from S2, you would get, um, going left from S2, you would be getting uh, point, you'd be going to um, S3 with 0.8. So 0.8, I'm sorry, if you go left, then you'll get to S1 with 0.9. So 0.9 times 10 plus 0.1 times 0.5. And uh, if you go right, then you'll get 0.8 times um, 0.5 plus 0.2 times 10. And then if you simplify this, you'll get 8.6. Okay. Um, so anyway, I'll remove this now. And then having done this right now, we have actually computed the value function with one step to go for S1, S2, S3, and S4. The next step is to compute, as I said, since I'm trying to compute the value for horizon 2, then next step is to compute value function um, with horizon 2. And then once again, I will need to compute um, the values of S1, S2, S3, and S4. And as soon as, as I'm computing the values of S1, S2, S3, S4, I will also wind up computing their policy to be done, the action to be done there. Okay, so let's then compute value of, um, um, let's compute the value of uh, S2 first. It's so a value of S3 because this is the one that we computed earlier. So this is S3, this is S2, this is S1, this is S4. So now value of S3 with two steps to go. So V2 S3 is R of S3, of course, plus max of going left and going right. Okay. Now R of S3 is still 0.5. Now max of, if you are in S3, um, if you are in S3 and if you are in S3 and you're going to go um, left from S3, um, if you're going to go from, if you're going to go left from S3, then you would do um, 0.8 times you will go to S2. Now S2's V1 value is 8.6 and then 0.2 you will go to the other side and um, that would be um, the you will go to S4 and the V1 value for S4 is 5.75. Okay. 
and then that's one and the other one would be 2.9 times uh, if you go from s3 if you go right you'll get into um, s4 um, which whose v1 value is 5.75 because we are now going to use this so 0.9 times 5.75 plus 0.1 times uh, 0.9 times 5.75 and, and 0.1 times the 0.25 Sorry, 0.1 times the new one is three, right? So 0.1 times 8.6. Okay. So if you do simplification of this, you'll notice that this is 8.03 and this is 6.035. So this is the bigger one which basically means you are better off now going left okay so suddenly f3 is going left and by going left it gets a value of 8.53 okay because this is 8.03 plus 0 0.5 0.53 okay so that's the calculation for v of v2 v1 of v2 of s3 and if you do the same sort of a calculation um for um if you do the same sort of a calculation for s4 you would get 8.5 but it will still be going right okay um in particular you can actually see that v1 v2 of s4 is r of s4 La, which, is point, which is basically 3 okay plus max over you're going to go if you go from s4 if you go right you'll go at 0.9 times you will stay in the same place if you stay in the same place you'll get 5.75 value plus 0.1 times you will go to the um, other direction and so you'll get 3.25 value okay and um, similarly if you go try to go right left then it's 0 0.8 times 3.25 plus 0.2 times 5.75 and of these two this will be this will be 5.5 and this will be 3.75 and so this is actually bigger so in fact you will go right okay and then of course you take 5.5 plus 3 um, it would be 8.5 okay so that's the thing and furthermore if you were to do the same sort of a calculation for um, s1 you will get 26.2 you get 26.2 and that involves basically of course going left and then for S2, you get 15.2, and that also involves going left. Okay, so that's basically your value equation. Um, and you notice that you started here in the, in the V1, you started by saying S3 will try to go right, S4 also tries to go right. S2 goes left and S1 goes left, but with two steps to go, um, you know, basically it's actually better for S3 to also go left. And with three steps to go, if you continue doing this, you will realize that S4 will also change its mind and start going left. The other thing you will notice is that as we keep going forward, we are in fact, the values of the states are increasing monotonically. And this is the problem that you have to be careful about um, when you have infinite horizon MDPs. Essentially, as the horizon keeps increasing, the values of the states will start increasing. Because this is a finite horizon, we do have all finite values and we still do know what is the best action to do at each point of time. And this is not wrong, you know, 26.2 for s1 with two steps to go is essentially saying that i will first i'll get 10 and then i'll try to go right 
I'll get a little more, and then I, I'm sorry, I try to go left, I'll get a little more, and then.